Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Jayhawk here and welcome to the All-Star Selection Show here on 2K22 Season 3 Custom League. Today we're going to be seeing the Custom League All-Star Draft. Hope you guys are excited about that. Same format like we've done the last couple of years with the All-Star Selection Show. Where, yeah, you'll, you'll see if you haven't been here before. So without further ado, let's get into the Custom League Draft. Alright guys, let's get into your favorite part of this video, the Season 3 All-Star Draft, and it's time to learn who the captains are, but before we do that, of course, gotta give a shout out to the Minnesota Monsters in the hometown of St. Paul's, Minnesota, for hosting this year's All-Stars weekend, should be a fun one. Let's get into the captains, and we'll start it out with the captain representing the Western Conference and the Kansas City Bison, Luka Doncic. Luka becoming a captain for the second consecutive season. He's a three-time All-Star, two-time starter, two-time captain, of course. Averaging 25 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. He's got 50% from the field and 43% from the three-point line. He is a captain for the second straight year. On the other side, in the Eastern Conference, representing the Montreal Huskies, is our boy Kevin Durant. Kevin, a first-time captain, two-time starter, three-time All-Star. And as you see his numbers right here, 22 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, 4.1 assists. He is shooting 55% from the field and 43% from the three-point line. Everybody's team records are also going to be included in this, so... For Luca, their records 22 and 22, and then Kevin's, as you see on the screen right now, 26 and 17. Let's meet the rest of the starters. Starting out with Luca having the first overall pick in the draft, and he selects from the New York Empire, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis, the third straight year that he's the All Star, of course, a starter every year. Not has not been chosen as a captain yet. We're gonna get there eventually with him though. But the reigning, two-time reigning MVP and finals MVP, Giannis averaging 21.5 points per game, 9.1 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 56% from the field, and 33% from the three-point line for the 20 and 23 Empire. For Team Kevin, his first pick from the Eastern Conference also, and the Illinois Steam Nikola Jokic, Jokic a three-time All-Star, the first time he has chosen to be a starter. Averaging 16 points, 11.6 rebounds, 7.1 assists, shooting 57% from the field and 45% from the three-point line for the 32-14 and 14 Illinois team. Next up for Team Luka, representing the New Orleans Jazz, is Paul George. PG-13, averaging 20.4 points per game, 5.4 assists, or rebounds, 3 assists, 46% from the field, 40, did I say 40, I feel like I just messed his numbers up, and they're on the screen right here, and I'm reading them from my notes, that's bad, 20.4 points, 5.4 rebounds, 3 assists, 46% from the field, 42% from the 3 point line, 2 time all-star, first time starter, everybody else in the starting lineup, is a first time starter and Paul George representing the 18 and 25 New Orleans Jazz. Next up for Team Kevin is Jason Tatum from the LA Palms. Tatum averaging 21.4 points, 6.7 rebounds, 4.3 assists. He's got 55% from the field and 50% from the three point line, a two time All Star for the 29 and 17 LA Palms. Next up for Team Luca, also from the Western Conference, is Donovan Mitchell from the Utah Range. Donovan Spider, averaging 22.6 points per game, 3.5 assists, 4.5. God, I just messed it up again. How did I do that, you goofy goober? 3.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists, 50% from the field, and 40% from the three point line for the 28 and 8. Teen range a two-time all-star first time starter of course that brings us to our next pick for team Kevin 
representing the Indianapolis Harvesters, we have Trey Young, Trigger Trey, averaging 20.4 points, 2.7 rebounds, 5.6 assists. He's shooting 50% from the field and 42% from the three-point line for the 24 and 24 Harvesters. He is a two-time All-Star now. Last picks as starters for both teams and for Team Luka. It will be DeAndre Ayton from the Alaska Aces. DeAndre averaging 15.3 points, 12.8 rebounds, 1.8 assists, 55% from the field and has not taken a three-point attempt. He's a two-time All-Star from the 25 and 21 Alaska Aces. And finishing out for Team Kevin, the last starter is going to be Zach Levine from the Cleveland Rockers. Zach leading the league with 26.1 points per game to go with his 5.1 rebounds, 2.6 assists. He's shooting 48% from the field and 37% from the three-point line for the 21 and 25 Rockers. He is a two-time All-Star, so there are your All-Star starters starting out with Luka. We'll go ahead and do the rundown again. It's Luka, Giannis, Paul George, Donovan Mitchell, and DeAndre Ayton. We come over here to Team Kevin now. It's Kevin Durant. He's got Jokic, Jason Tatum, Trey Young, and Zach Levine right next to him. <clears throat> now let's get over the bench players. And Team KD getting the first pick for the reserve spot. And with the first pick, he will take from the Richmond Rams, LeBron James. LeBron, King James, averaging 15 points. 7 points per game, 5.4 rebounds, 5.9 assists. He's shooting 51% from the field and 33% from the three-point line. A three-time All-Star from the 25 and 21 Rams. First up for Team Luke off the bench, <clears throat> representing the Oakland Oaks, is Anthony Davis, AD averaging 17.7 points per game to go with 7.4 rebounds, 3.1 assists. 48% from the field and 38% from the three-point line. A three-time All-Star from the 28 and 18 Oaks. Next up for Team KD, going with defense here from the Florida Hedgehogs, Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi averaging 16.5 points, 4.3 rebounds, 2.7 assists, 49% from the field and 42% from the three-point line from the three-time All-Star 19 and 27 Hedgehogs. Next up for Team Luca is Dame Dollar, Dame Lillard from the Atlanta Thrashers. He's averaging 19 points, 2.8 rebounds, 4.1 assists, 48% from the field, and 42% from the three-point line for the 16 and 27 Thrashers. He's a three-time All-Star. First time he is coming off the bench, though. Next up for Team KD, representing the Cleveland Rockers, is Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Buckets postseason killer averaging 19.8 points per game 6.2 rebounds four assists he's got 56 percent from the field and 33 percent from the three-point line he is a two-time all-star from the 21 and 25 rockers next up for team luca we have bradley bill from the okc lancers Bradley, a first-time All-Star, averaging 22.3 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists. He's shooting 53% from the field and 39% from the 3-point line, representing the 20 and 25 OKC Lancers. Next up for Team KD, another first-time All-Star in Ja Morant from the Milwaukee Cheeses. He is averaging 21.3 points, 4.9 rebounds, 5.3 assists. 56% from the field and 42% from the three-point line for the 21 and 24 cheeses. Next up for Luca, another first-time All-Star, LaMelo Ball from the Cincinnati Lions. He's averaging 16.8 points. He's got 5.5 rebounds, 5.9 assists, 49% from the field and 37% from the three-point line, representing the 25 and 17 Lions. Next up for Team KD, look at this, another first-time All-Star, Shea Gilgis-Alexander from the Pittsburgh Force, averaging 20.4 points per game, 3.9 rebounds, 5.4 assists, 50% from the field, and 36% from the three-point line, representing the Pittsburgh Force with their 21-23 and record of first-time All-Star. 
Next up for Team Luca, another first time All Star. We have Cade Cunningham representing the 33 and 15 Colorado Spring Ducks. He's averaging 20.6 points, 4.8 rebounds, 3.5 assists, 53% from the field, and 51% from the three point line. Couple more picks to go right here for Team KD. He's got three. Lucas got three. For KD right here, representing the LA Knights, Chris Stapps Porzingis. Porzingis, a two time All Star, has 19.1 points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.1 assists, 42% from the field, and 29% from the three point line for the 13 and 28 Knights. For Team Luca, a first time All Star, Clint Capella. Yeah, Clint Capella, 10.8 rebound or points to go with 12 rebounds. I'm reading my numbers wrong again. 1.3 assists. He's got 56% from the field, 0 for 2 from the three-point line for the 24 and 18 Warbirds. So shout out Clint, first time All-Star. Next up for Team KD is going to be Kyrie Irving representing the Las Vegas Outlaws in their 23 and 22 record. Kyrie, a three-time All-Star, averaging 21.4 points, 2.6 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 53% from the field, and 42% from the three-point line. Next up for Team Luka is going to be DeMar DeRozan from the New York Empire. DeRozan, a first-time All-Star, 16.7 points, 2.4 rebounds, 3.1 assists, on 58% from the field, and it's only took him one three-point attempt this year. That's crazy. But that's his game. That is DeMar's game. Last two players in the All-Star team. And for Team Kevin Durant, he will take our first-ever custom prospect All-Star, Jay Walking from the Richmond Rams. Jay, a first-time All-Star, is averaging 18.3 points, 1.3 rebounds, 8.3 assists, shooting 44% from the field and 40% from the three-point line for the 25 and 21 Rams. <clears throat> and our final all-star for Team Luca, representing the LA Palms, Carl Anthony Towns, a first-time all-star, averaging 13.2 points, 7.7 rebounds, 3.1 assists, 49% from the field, and 45% from the three-point line for the 29 and 17 Palms. So, <clears throat> we'll quickly run over the reserves again. Starting out with Team Kevin, you got LeBron, Kawhi, Jimmy, Ja, Shea, Chris Stapps, Kyrie, and Jay for Team Luca right here. You have AD, Dame, right? AD, Dame, Bradley, LaMelo, Cade, Clint, DeMar, and Carl Anthony Towns. So, you've seen the teams now. Who is going to be your pick to win the All-Star team? Are you going with Team Luca or are you going with Team Kevin? Let me know in the comments below. But, we're going to bring back something I did last year, which, which was name the top five All-Star stubs. Stubs, wow. This is the MLB The Show. I guess that's what I get for recording at 3 in the morning. Top five all-star snubs, and let's start it out with the hometown kid, Jalen Brown from the Minnesota Monsters. He's averaging 20.2 points, four rebounds, 2.3 assists. He's shooting 51% from the field and 41% from the three-point line for the 24 and 22 Monsters. And with him missing the all-star team, this is going to be the first time that we have the host city not have a player on the all-star team. So that kind of sucks. Feel bad for Jalen. Feel like he deserved the spot. But we'll go on to the next one, which is R.J. Barrett from the D.C. Federals. I could have went with James Harden right there, but I decided to go with R.J. His numbers are really good. 18.4 points, 5.6 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 47% from the field, and 39% from the three-point line. Probably... A big reason why he didn't make it was because of that 17-33 and 33 record that the Federals have. Next up, we'll move it on and keep it at guard for now, which is Darius Garland for the St. Louis Spirits. St. Louis, or I said St. Louis, wow! Darius Garland averaging 18 points, 2.3 rebounds, 6.1 assists, 
51% from the field and 41% from the three-point line for the 25 and 21 spirits. Those are really good numbers. Those are like all-star caliber numbers. Just for some reason get, didn't get the edge to make it. Next up, I, I put him on this list for a reason. Andre Drummond. Yes, Andre Drummond from the Montreal Huskies. He's averaging 11.4 points, 13.2 rebounds, which is leading the league. 2.4 assists, 48% from the field, and no three-point attempts. And, of course, I put him and this next person on the list just for the fact that Clint Capella made the All-Star team. Drummond is a prior All-Star, though. But, I guess he just didn't make it this year. The final All-Star snub is Rudy Gobert from the Las Vegas Outlaws. He's averaging 10.7 points, 10.6 rebounds, .9 assists on 67% from the field. And like I said, with Drummond, just put him on this list because Clint Cabela made the All-Star game. And honestly, you could argue for either one of the three of them to make the All-Star team. But that's how it ended up. So, let's, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, let's move it on to the next part of this video. Let me know who you're picking in this game, Team Luca or Team KD. I'll let you know my pick when we get to the All-Star game. Alright guys, so we got through the draft, if you want to recap, Team Kevin versus Team Luka, and it's going to be KD in the starting lineup along with him, it's going to be Jokic, Jason Tatum, Trey Young, and Zach Levine off the bench, we got LeBron, Kawhi, Jimmy, Ja, Shea, Kristaps, Kyrie, and it didn't show at the bottom, the other two, and we have our first ever custom league uh, custom prospect Jay Walking has made it. Congrats, Jay, for being an All Star in your rookie year. No, this second year, my bad. <clears throat> but congrats to Jay for making it. So we move on to Team Luca now. And line up with him. It's gonna be Yo uh, Giannis, Paul George, Donovan, DeAndre, and off the bench we get AD, Dame, Bradley, Lamelo, Cade, Clint. Demar and Carl Anthony Towns is also an all-star so congrats to everybody that made the all-star team Of course it gets me the choice to override But I'm not doing that. I'm not now that that would be messed up to take away their all-stars and Yeah, I don't know. It just didn't show the bottom two for some reason because both teams are supposed to have 13. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yep. It just didn't show the bottom two. But I did make sure to have that in the video also. But. Yep. We have made it through the All-Star Draft. Now in this video. We're going to be focused on Valentine's Day. We have a bunch of games to go through. We got Cincinnati and Oakland. Florida to LA Knights, we got Indianapolis, OKC, Toronto, and Montreal, uh, the LA Palms are in Minnesota, uh, New York Eclipse in Co uh, Colorado Springs, we got Milwaukee, Las Vegas, St. Louis, Illinois, we got Memphis and Tampa Bay, we got Atlanta and Seattle, Iowa, Nevada, Nashville and Arizona, the New York Nightmare, in Minneapolis, Cleveland at Carolina, and D.C. at Alaska. And what we're going to do is hop in the game. Games are close with the last two minutes in the fourth quarter. And if you, yeah, we'll see what happens. But this is what we got for this video. And then at the end of the video, we will get ready for the trade deadline special. I'm excited about doing that. We we got a couple videos until the All Star draft, well All Star game. We have Valentine's Day coming up, then we have the trade deadline special, and then I'm gonna have uh, five videos, five days coming up after this. So uh, the following week of this of the trade deadline special, we will have uh, Monday through Friday upload. Five games, five days. So, that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into some Valentine's Day action. 
Oakland starts out this video with a 95-77 victory at home over the Cincinnati Lions. And Tyrese Maxey put on a show, young fella. 24 points in this one. AD had 18 points. Larry Nance with 16 points. Mobley had 9 and 8. Had, who is this? Josh Minnett with 7 and 7. Our boy Jaden Barr with 5 points. He only played 10 minutes, so I'm assuming he probably got hurt. We'll definitely be checking that at the end of this game. Well, at the end of the episode. Yeah, Josh Christopher leading the way for the Lions with 16 points. Bam had 14. This is Theo Maldon. He had 10 points. Lamelo 8, 8, and 9. Didn't shoot the ball well, but he contributed with almost triple-double. P.J. Washington had 7. My boy Dad 6 points, but he had 3 steals, 4 blocks. So he didn't... Really helped out offensively, but defensively he put on the show. <clears throat> As we go through the stats real quick. Because we got other videos to go through. Well, other games to go through. 37 point lead at one point for Oakland. <clears throat> so now, we'll take our chance to LA. As the Knights host the Florida Hedgehogs. The LA Knights win game 2 of this episode with a 77-67 victory over the Florida Hedgehogs. It was Chris Middleton and Porzingis both dropping 18 points in this one to lead the LA Knights. Yeah, Jonathan Isaac with 12 points, and Will Barton even put in 11 points. So four players in double figures, and most of the time when you do that, you're going to win a game. The bench didn't really help out that much, but they got the W anyways. For the Hedgehogs, it was Kawhi leading the way with 27 points, and then Lowry had 13. Zion Admola had 19 points, or I think 19, wow, 9 points. And then after that, not really much help. Sabonis, 17 rebounds. But you got players off the bench not even scoring and shooting the ball bad like Jason Tate. 0 for 7, 0 for 4. Not going to win you many games when you do that. So we go over here and look at these stats real quick. Something real quick. Florida never led in this one and LA had a 19 point lead at one point. So that brings us to our next game. We're going to see the OKC Lancers as they take on the Indianapolis Harvesters. Indianapolis blows out OKC by 31 points, 106 to 75 in this one. The Lancers were led by Bradley Bills, 24 points. Yeah, Robert Williams had 12 points, 9 rebounds. Hachimura had 11 points. And then, yeah, you see the rest of the team. Yeah, Najee Fahmed had 11 assists in this one. Just, yeah, I'm... Okay, there we go. They had six players in double figures. Trey Young led the way with 26. Tyler Hero with 17. We got Billiam, LeVar, Tyrese with 16 points. Nurkic had 15. Cam Reddish with 12. Horton Tucker had 10. Reggie Perry had 11 rebounds to go with his 7 points. Yeah. <laughs> you see why they won this game going over the numbers right here? Yeah. This just didn't look like a close game at all. At least OKC okay, so had a 2 point lead at one point. But Indianapolis with the blowout victory, so we'll go to Montreal. Another Battle of Canada as Toronto and Montreal face off for the second time this season. Let's get it. Montreal handles business at home with a 96-73 victory over their rivals, the Toronto Towers. KD leading the way, 33 points, 11 rebounds, 4 assists. And Trey Mann with 13, D'Lo with 12, Drummond with 10, and Nikhil Alexander Walker with 10. Five players in double figures. Most of the time, it's definitely going to get you a win. For the Towers, it was Steph Curry leading the way with 20 points. Clay Thompson, 14. He struggled, though. 5 of 16, 2 of 10. Not a good game for him. Robin Lopez with eight point, or 10 points, 6 rebounds. Uh, custom prospect, D'Angelo Dawkins, 6, 5, and 6 with 3 steals on 2 of 13 shooting. He definitely struggled. Got to get better with that. As we go through these quick numbers, just to show you guys how everything was, you guys can pause it if you want. 24 point lead at one point for Toronto, or for Montreal, 4 point lead for Toronto. So now we'll head to Minnesota. The LA Palms are in town to take on the Monsters. So let's get it. This game looks close, but it really actually wasn't close. Just Minnesota scored like 5 points. In the last 30 seconds to make it a 5 point loss instead of a 10 point loss. But LA, 80-75 victory on the road. Jalen Brown leading the way with 17 for the Monsters. My boy JD Hager, 12 points, 9 rebounds to help him out. 
This is uh, Brandon Boston Jr. He had 11 points in this one. And the rest of the group, as you see, did their thing. Is that Draymond not scoring? Yep, Draymond. Four rebounds, five assists, two steals, and a block. I love Draymond. Honestly, I like Draymond a lot. Cole Anthony led the way 15 for the Palms. Jason Tatum also had 15. RJ Hampton with 13 points. Then the rest of the crew did their thing. My boy Josh Little, 5 points, 3 rebounds, 6 assists. He did his thing in this one. Carl Anthony Towns, 6 and 8. Didn't really shoot the ball well, but they held their own and got the victory in this one. As you look at the stats, definitely that 3 point percentage looking kind of rough for the Monsters in this one. Never led in this one. And LA, like I said, had a 15 point lead at one point. It was 10 in the last 30 seconds, but. Minnesota was able to score five points real quick to make it look like a closer game than it was. But now we'll move to Colorado Springs as we'll see the New York Empire on the road taking on the Ducks. The Ducks with an 11-point home victory over the Empire in this one. Cade Cunningham leading the way with 18 points. Who is this? Michael Foster Jr. 16 points in this one. Got our custom prospect Clyde Blackheart with 15 to help out. And then, yeah, Alf, Alfarin Sengun with 15 points also. Five or four players with 15 plus. That's definitely going to get you a win in this one. As Giannis, 29 points in this one. DeRozan had 18. Dennis Smith Jr. with 10. Just not enough offense to keep up with Colorado Springs in this one. We go over the quick numbers. Empire shooting terrible from the three-point line. So, looking at all these stats now, we are going to head to Las Vegas as the Outlaws will be hosting the Milwaukee Cheeses. We get Kyrie versus Ja in this one, so hopefully we get a chance to hop in. So, let's see what happens. Las Vegas wins 104 to 97 in this one. Kyrie drops 35 in this one. Book Knight had 12 points. Rudy Gobert had 11 points. Obi Toppin with 10 points. Look at all these players with 8 plus. Look at that. You had 7 players with 8 plus for Las Vegas. No wonder they won this game. Ja Morant, 23 in this one. And then Scotty Barnes with 20. Two players with 20. Denny had uh, 11. Jakob Ferdo with 8 and 8. They had a bunch of guys with 5 points in this one. But yeah, Kyrie dropped 35. No wonder they won this one. Shooting numbers, pretty, yeah, pretty similar in this one. That's, that's actually pretty cool to see right there. Las Vegas did have a 19-point lead at one point. But, yeah, 7-point victory for Las Vegas. Still haven't hopped into a game yet. Hopefully, we're going to get one of those in this video. We still got a couple more, well, like a handful of games left to go. Next up, we're going to head to Illinois. The Steam hosts the St. Louis Spirits in this one, so let's... Let's see if we can get a hop in. Hopefully. Please, let us hop into a game. 152 left in the fourth quarter. It's blocked. They've got Bowl. Profit is out there with Thomas. And there's Jackson. And it's Jokic in at the five, roaming the paint. Now the pass to Trent. This one for three. It's held in by Jokic. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. Well, I'll tell you what, he earned his money on that foul. Yeah, if you're going to foul, then make sure that you don't give a chance for the end one. Boys is checked in for Bull. He hits both from the strike. He's basically automatic from the line, not the guy you want to send there now. And Steven Silas wants a timeout. The scoring really put him over the top. You can see how determined he's been every time he's gotten his hands on the ball. Great drive and also great focus offensively. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Hey, guys, here's the message Steven Silas gave to his team. With this game in the balance, he really came after his guys. He said, this is our time right now. Be in the moment with each other. Do your job, and I promise you we'll win this game. Back to you. Thanks, David. Here's Trent following the basket by Jokic. Hey, swing it. Hey, you get it, get it. 
Jokic grabs the miss. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. And they had a foul to kill, but you want to use it on the ground. Yeah, I agree with you there, but at least they did get the clock stopped. That is the one saving grace of that situation. Yeah, and, and luckily they, they've got terrific depth at that position. If there's one spot on the floor where they can afford to lose somebody, that would probably be it. Trent can't hit. And, and he has definitely been struggling in this quarter. You know, guys, it seems to me as though he's over anxious. He seems to be pressing, trying too hard, moving too fast. He just needs to calm himself down and wait for good shots. We're going the other way. All goes to the away team. How about that strong defensive performance for this half's mobile one block? And this is why coaches stress the importance of defense. Big block there in this close game. And Steven Silas watching. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Nineteen seconds left in the game. Kicks to Garland. Just five on the clock. No good from three-point territory. So Dwayne Casey decides to call a timeout. Now here is Morris. Here's Jokic. Good! an all-star level talent for sure. Jokic, a safe bet in the clutch. So the home crowd happy here as they get the victory. What a show they put on here at home tonight. I mean, these are those games that feel so great to win and, and really, it's like a knife in the gut to lose. Uh, you, you gotta love being on edge of your seat and just wondering what's gonna happen. How is this thing gonna play out? Yay, we got to hop in and see an exciting finish as Illinois pulls out the 102-100 victory on Jokic's game winner. He had a triple-double 19, 18, and 10 in this one. But Jaden Hardy led the way with 24 for this team. Cam Thomas had 20, or had 14, fuck, I was looking at his minutes. Salih Ahmed had 14 points. Is that Kobe White? Kobe White with 12 points. They had five players in double figures. No wonder they won this game. Everybody that scored had six plus two. For the Spirits, it was Jalen Duran leading the way with 21. He fouled out, though, in that last minute. Lou Dort had 19. Garland had 16. Gary Trent had 13. He didn't shoot the ball well, but hit his free throws. And then Daniel Poco had 11 points to help out the cause in this one. Both teams shooting looks pretty good. Really good game for both teams. It was a close one. And look at that. The biggest lead all together was three points. So this was a really fun game to see. I'm glad we got to hop in and see the end of that one. So now we're going to be taking our talents to Tampa Bay. As the Sharks be, are hosting the Memphis Sounds in this one. So let's see if we get another hop in game. I'm so disappointed because it was such a close game and then Tampa decided to pull away. I was so sad. But Tampa gets the 12-point victory, 88-76. to Rex Gordon leading the way with 16 points. Look at the custom prospect. We got Alonzo Ball with 15 points. Bagley with 13. Is that Keldon Johnson? Yep, Keldon Johnson with 12. Kevin Love with 10. Gaffrey with 10. Look at that. Six players with double figures. No wonder Tampa ended up winning this one. For the Sounds, they had five players in double figures, led by Mark Nins, 14. John Collins had 12. My boy D'Lo with 11 points. OG and Puku. Poku. Puku, Peku. Lakers and nine. I don't know. But they both had 10 points in this one. Shooting numbers kind of even across the board. Just like I said, Tampa ended up pulling away in this one. Both teams had 12-point leads at one point. So that's crazy. But now we had the Seattle, as the Sea Dragons will be hosting the Atlanta Thrashers in this one. So let's see what happens. The floater, the shot by Lillard, no good. We'll have a hard time shaking that one off. Perfect position, plenty of space, just clanked it. Devin Booker out there with Jeremy Grant. 
Then there's Kevin Porter. Then there's De'Aaron Fox. Booker for three. He buries it from three. He's a guy that lives for a big moment like that. Great focus and courage in the clutch. Lillard against Fox. It's stolen by Fox. And here's the fast break. Porter, the pass to Graham. And here's Fox. Back to Grant. Four on the clock. It's Booker on the wing. Off target from outside. And this is exactly who you want taking that shot. He just missed it. Heel passes to Lillard. Good work defensively by Fox. In transition, here they come. The shot, no good. So Atlanta will take it the other way. Pass to McCullum. Can't hit the step back, Jay. Now that's just enough defensive pressure on him to throw off that shot. I bet he gets a, a good look at it next time and hits it. And now we've got an intentional foul. First personal foul, second team foul. Into the lineup for Atlanta. From the field was just rock solid. I mean, just reliable, consistent, steady. Man, he gave them a safety net on every possession out there. And he commits the intentional foul. So the first one drops, and that'll put him up two. So he gets them both, and it's a three-point game. Well, important there to have the three-point lead because only a three can tie it up now. Now a timeout called by Atlanta. And he gets it back from deep three-point range. Off target from downtown. And they stop the clock as soon as they can with the intentional foul. Yeah, no choice but to foul in that situation. Although, that's not the guy you want to send to the free throw line. Jeremy Grant just has such a great combination of athleticism and explosiveness. It's up to him to find familiar spots on the floor and do a good job of playing off his teammates to make an impact on every game that he plays. And so the home crowd treated to a win. Boy. Seattle is able to get the 88-84 victory over Atlanta in this one. Peyton Watson, Brandon Clark, each with 12 points for Seattle. De'Aaron Fox had 11. Book with 10. He struggled from the floor. That three, though, to give him the lead helped out. Jeremy Grant also had 10. Everybody that scored had 8 plus for Seattle, so you'll take that every day, no matter if everybody's shooting well or shooting bad. For the Thrashers, it was Dame leading the way with 26 points. McCollum had 14. Buddy Hill with 10. And then, out after that, I mean, everybody scored. Just, yeah. Couldn't, just didn't have enough to beat Seattle in this one as you look at the numbers look at the numbers they're all basically similar numbers in this one and look at that the biggest lead of the game was a four point lead which was the four point victory for Seattle in this one so now we'll head to Nevada as the Warbirds are taking on the Iowa Pigs in this one so let's see what happens Nevada able to get a 10 point victory in this one I would try to make it close with a 12 point win in the fourth quarter but yeah, I would dominate this game, especially from in the second and third quarters, to be able to pull away to the victory. Derrick Rose leading the way, 19 points for the Warbirds. J.D. Davidson had 16. Kimba with 15. Colin Sexton had nine points. You see everybody else in this one for the War Warbirds. Uh, for the Pigs, it was Kevin Herter and DeAndre, right? DeAndre Hunter both with 14, Valanciunas had 12, Fred Van Vliet had 10 points. If you look at everybody else right here in this one, going through the box scores, bad shooting percentage at the three-point line for the Pigs right there. 24-point lead for at one point for Nevada, like I said, especially in that second and third quarter with the big lead like that. So now we'll head to Arizona. 
we get to see the Rattlers taking on the Nashville enemies in this one. So let's see what happens. 24 seconds left in the fourth. From deep, Gay. Not going to go that time. And he commits the intentional foul. Honestly, just doing what they have to in order to get the basketball back. And that hurts as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. And the second of two is good. That gives them a four-point cushion. And Arizona calls time here. They're behind by four. But the D they played on him deserves a little bit of the blame as well. Even when he got hot, they didn't do enough, I don't think, to try and cool him off. And they've been passive when they needed to be aggressive. And boy, did he make them pay. And there's the intentional foul. No choice but to stop the clock here. 14 foul. Good on the first, and that puts them up by five. Aaron Niska. Taking two shots. So he gets them both, and it's a six point ball game. And that's the knockout blow right there, guys. Those free throws should put this one away. And Arizona calls two possession game. But that means you'll have to hit two threes without your opponent scoring again. Robinson for three, kept alive. Pass to Diallo. Here's Niang. So Nashville wins it. They seem to relish their role as the bad guy here tonight. Yeah, you know, Kevin, I sense that as well. I mean, they really did feed off all of that negative energy this crowd was directing at them. I mean, they turned it around and used it as motivation to close out a significant win. Well, we were able to see the end of this one, but <laughs> nothing for Arizona comes from it as Nashville Gets the 98-92 victory in this one. The Rattlers led by Terrence, uh, Terrence Ross scoring 20 points. Had Duncan Robinson with 13. Diallo with 12. Niang had 12. Patty Mills with 10 points. Yeah, good, good balance scoring for this team. But the enemies were the victorious team in this one with Randall scoring 22 in this one. My boy Zay Phil with 17. At Bryce McGowan's, he had 15 in this one. As you come over here and look at these numbers real quick, and see why this game was won. Arizona never led in this one, and Nashville has had the six-point victory be the biggest lead in this game. So now we'll take our talents to Minneapolis as the Lumberjacks host the New York Nightmare. Only a couple more games left in this video so we'll see what happens Minneapolis gets a 81 73 victory over the visiting New York nightmare in this one Jaden Ivey leading away with 13 points for the Lumberjack Bojan with 12 points AO had 10 points look at all this balance scoring my boy Ajax 6 points in this one but a bunch of players 8 points plus to help them get the win. Montrez Harrell led the weight with 26 points. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Montrez led the weight. That's, that's scary. Bielitsa had 15. Cameron Payne with 13, 4, and 9. He had a really good game. Kuzma had 7 points. He, yeah. Lord, have mercy. Nightmare shot 50% from the floor and got a loss in this one. Usually when you shoot 50 plus percent, you get a win. Just... Minneapolis the better team 18 point lead at one point so now we head to Carolina and Cleveland matching up against each other so let's see what happens in this one Cleveland comes on the road and rocks Carolina uh, that was lame I'm sorry rocks them the rockers yeah I'm lame I'm sorry 97 78 victory for Cleveland on the road Westbrook I meant Westbrook <laughs> sorry a little hate sorry Lakers fan here. Anyways, Westbrook, Westbrook, 17 point Clarkson with 15, TJ Warren with 14. Yeah, they they did pretty well. Just couldn't keep up with Cleveland in this one. Zach Levine 28 points in this one. Jimmy Butler with 18 also, and from Anfernine, Anfernine Simons with 12 points. Ilya Sova with 12 points. Devontae Graham with 12 points. Yeah. <laughs> All those players with double figures. No wonder they won this game. 
and the shooting numbers too. Yeah, definitely. Carolina doesn't shoot the ball, three ball like that. As you see, only 17 attempts in this one. But this brings us to our last game of the video. DC on the road in Alaska taking on the Aces. Final game. Let's see what happens. Well, the final game almost had potential for a hop in, but Alaska ended up pulling away and getting the 10 point victory in this one to wrap up our video with a 95-85 win. Is that Tyus Jones? Tyus Jones 20 points leading away for Alaska. DeAndre Ayton had 16, Sadiq Bay with 15, Chris Ball with 12, Lyles with 10, Jalen Green with 9, Saban Lee with 8, jeez, no wonder they won, lord, had James Harden lead the way with 24, our custom prospect Marky Walker had 16, had RJ Barrett with 14, Brooke Lopez 11, Kennedy Chandler had 8 points in 9 minutes. That's pretty good. Terrence Mann with seven. We go through these numbers real quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's going to get ready to wrap up this video. We'll go over the new standings. And, yeah. All the little updates I do at the end of the video. So let's get into it. All right. Time to go over the standings right here. And... We're already on Alaska, so we'll start out in the West. Colorado Springs 1, LA Palms 2, Oakland 3, Utah 4, Nevada 5, Alaska 6. Our four play-in teams right now are St. Louis, Minnesota, Las Vegas, and Kansas City. So on the outside, we have Milwaukee, OKC, Arizona, Iowa, New Orleans, LA Knights, Seattle, and Minneapolis is still the worst team in the West. To the East is Baltimore. At one, Nashville and Illinois. This is going to be a crazy race for the top seed. I'm excited to see how this finishes. Baltimore 1, Nashville 2, Illinois 3. And then right behind them, Montreal 4, Toronto 5, Cincinnati 6. Could we see a battle of Canada in the first round of playoffs? That would be lit. With Cincinnati 6, our four play-in teams right now, Richmond Indianapolis, Tampa Bay, and Pittsburgh. So on the outside looking in, we have Cleveland, Memphis, New York Empire, New York Nightmare, Florida, Atlanta, D.C., and Carolina is still the worst team in the league. So crazy to see right now. Come over here, league leader Zach Levine still leading the way in points per game. Got Luka, Donovan Mitchell, Bradley Beal, and KD also in the top five. For rebounds, Drummond leading the way, 8-2, Cabela 3, Jokic 4, and Embiid still 5, even though he's hurt, and he's most likely not going to play the rest of the season. It's a 2-4 to four month recovery now, so probably not going to see him the rest of the season. In assist, it's Luka leading the way, Jay Walking, the All-Star is 2nd, yet yeah, I'm up here at 3rd, Jokic 4, and then Najif Ahmed is 5th. Jimmy Butler and Dennis Smith tied for 1st in steals per game. Yeah, Gobert and Jaron Jackson tied for first in blocks per game. Field goal percentage is Zion leading the way at 70%. He's hurt, though. So we'll just go ahead and say Robert Williams leads, leads the way. Three-point percentage is led by Cade Cunningham at 51%. Free throw percentage is Bones. I'm never going to call him Nash. Is it Nashon? I just know him as Bones. So Bones leading the way at 95% from the free throw line. For rookies, Jaden Hardy still leading the way in points per game. You got Marky Walker, Salih Ahmed, and Balil Ahmed all in the top five right there. Rebounds, Jalen Duran leading the way. You got John Gordon and D'Angelo Dawkins in the top five. Assist, Najif Ahmed, Salih Ahmed, Balil, Balal Ahmed, and D'Angelo Dawkins all in the top five. Paulo Banchero leading the way in steals. Rex Gordon in blocks. You got my boy Dez and John Gordon also in the top five right there. Uh, next thing we have to go check on, you already saw the All-Stars. So let's go ahead and take a look at the award race. You got Luka, Jokic, Embiid, Giannis, and Donovan Mitchell in MVP race. Rookie of the Year got D'Angelo Dawkins, Chet Holmgren, J.D. Davidson, Salil Ahmed, and Billiam, LaVar, Tyrese all in there. Sixth Man of the Year, J.D. Davidson. 
Kevin Porter, Tyus Jones, Kevin Love, and Jordan Poole. Defense player of the year, uh, Giannis, Thibel, Jaron Jackson, Norris Noel, and Jimmy Butler. And finishing out, most improved, we had Jay Walking, Okongwu, Darius Garland, uh, DeAndre Ayton, and Juan Toscano. I don't know why you're on here. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. I don't think it has anything else. Yep, it just has these two on it. Uh, we'll just check the injury report. Me too. And Gordon Hayward's out for the season. Torn Achilles. Going by overalls now. Anybody coming back soon? Oh, Jaden Barr's out a couple weeks. Damn. Brogdon's got a migraine. Now we're just looking for, like, custom prospects at this point. I like making sure like custom prospects aren't hurt. I think Jaden, yeah, look now nah, we got Balel Ahmed a couple more weeks with his uh injury breaking Larson. A couple more weeks also for him, but besides that, don't really have anybody crazy. BI's gonna be back in a couple weeks. Zion should be back in about a month or so. Yeah. But that's gonna do it for this uh video next video is the trade deadline hope everybody's excited make sure if you guys uh i hope you guys checked my video and voted on trades because i got them all completed we're gonna be ready to go next episode so appreciate everybody for all the love and support as always make sure you guys like comment share subscribe turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss an upload and with that being said i will catch you guys on the next one it takes time i'm just trying to be the